Hey guys, welcome to another unboxing here with Midnight Monty. Today we're going to be doing cons of Tarkir, and we're doing three booster boxes. <clears throat> I got these again from REA Games, and no, I didn't get them for free. I wish. But, uh, I'm going to leave their Facebook link in the description, and you should go check them out if you like them. You know, make some purchases, mention my name, and, you know... Hopefully they can do some good business for you. So to hopefully speed this up, we're gonna I'm gonna crack all three of these at the once and just mix all the packs together and you know hopefully fast forward through this process real fast. buy anybody but I guess cons fetch lands fetch lands fetch lands fetch lands they're awesome and they still hold their value so hopefully we can pull a whole bunch of them maybe a foil one or two I don't know let's start cracking them and find out we got what a hundred some odd packs to go through so let's make this quick Oh, fetch land on the first one. Look at that. Flooded strain is nice. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't start playing again when this, this set came out, but <clears throat> it's got some pretty nice cards. Of course, it's got, you know, your Siege Rhino and the Mantis Rider and your Charms. They're pretty some pretty decent cards in this set. I don't know why people still aren't cracking them. High Sentinels of Arashin. I've seen a pretty couple. I mean, of course, the Mantis Rider is pretty nice, especially in a multicolored deck. Pro Lake Agent. And then, of course, Seed Rhino. Everybody and their mom runs it. <clears throat> I run it. <laughs> Crackling Doom. We gotta get a foil one, right? A foil fetch land. I mean, three boxes. What are our chances? It's gotta be good. Jeering Instigator. Narset. Enlightened Master. I think it's the first time I pulled her. Hmm. First Strike, Hexproof. Uh, what else? Ooh, there we go. Whenever she attacks, exile all the top four cards in your library. You may cast my creature. So, expel well, that's not bad. I mean, she's kind of expensive, but a not bad card. These triple lands are pretty awesome, too. I like these. That's what I remember. You know, when I first started playing, there wasn't a whole lot of multicolor. Another high sentinels, and a lot of that they've really brought multicolored into the forefront. Chess guy ascendancy. Now this is actually a really good card. I have a friend of mine that runs a Jessica Chess guy ascendancy deck with oh that Zendikar card, um, the Merfolk guy. Man, he turns everything, all his lands into creatures, then he taps them, and then turns it back into creatures. It gets ridiculous. 
Clever impersonator. I don't know if that's got some value on it. Hmm. Have to check that one out. Come on, fetchies! Howl of the Horde. Wow, not one foil yet. <clears throat> oh, Foil Island, Speak of the Devil. And... Meandering Tower Shell. So, I am excited for the new set, of course, Ankle Shanker. I think Oath of the Gate Watch is going to be awesome. It's been a long time since I've been to a pre-release. I think the last one I went to was Betrayers of Kamigawa. And, and that was when I was garbage at this game. So garbage. Trail of Mystery. I think I, I didn't even win a game. I didn't even know how to build decks back then rookie but I'm excited I think I'm gonna do all six events that are going on in my like local game store so I can hopefully get some new expeditions I'm just excited to see what's gonna be in that set oh war name aspirant as a aspirant I guess aspirant yeah and an icy blast. I'm, I'm excited to see. I mean, they look like there's gonna be some awesome cards. And I mean, the whole theme. I wonder. I mean, it makes me wonder. I wonder if they're gonna bring Emrakul back. Sage of the Inward Eye. You know, I mean, they got Kozilek, unconfirmed, but I mean, it looks pretty legit, right? Another cheering instigator, but foil this time. Ooh, fancy. And a deflecting palm. <clears throat> what I'd like to do, let me throw some of this crap away. What I'd really like to do is get my hands on some original Zendikar. That would be a fun box to open. Oh, another foil. Say, Sagu Archer and an Avalanche Tusker. God, only one fetch land so far. <sighs> Sagu Mahler. Mm. Altar of the Brood. Hmm. Whenever another permanent enter the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of his or her library to the graveyard. That could actually be good in a commander deck. In any deck, but really a commander deck. As some of you may know that um, they are gearing with Battle for Zendikar and Oath of the Gatewatch towards the two-headed giant format in multiplayer. That's why a lot of these cards say to each opponent, not just to your opponent. Trap Essence. So, I mean, two-headed giant's fun. I mean, I have a, a really slow deck that works well with a teammate that's fast. I can block. I wonder if they're going to incorporate that into some tournaments then. Dragon Throne of Tarkir. I don't know. Ooh, Wooded Foothills. Nice. Another fetch land. I really like these fetch lands, especially with those Tango lands that we have. They make awesome combinations, being able to 
pull almost, I mean, basically a fetch land with some tangle lands in your deck. Let's you run, pull with one fetch land, four different colors. Basically, it's awesome. Thousand Wind. Ooh, focus. There we go. It leaves a lot of possibilities open for Dragon Style Twins, for your deck, for running multicolor. I mean, monocolor really isn't really well run very much. I, mean, I, I don't see a whole lot of it. I see maybe aggro deck, monocolor, another Dragon Style Twins. I mean, I'm not aggro deck, but a mono red for releases and like the first few weeks of a set. And then mono blue for control. I see that a few times. Herald at Manifest. Goddamn camera always stopping. But like I said, I see a lot of um, multicolor. I mean, two to three, maybe four or five if you're frisky like I am. I don't, you know, I don't like to play by standards or what other people think are cool or good. I, I, I build a deck on how I feel that it works. You know, do I like this deck? Do I find this deck fun to play? Another foil, a mic tracker. And a Rakasha Death Dealer. <clears throat> I mean, unless you're ultra competitive, I think having a deck that is just fun to play is really important. I mean, you gotta just enjoy it. Foil Windstorm. And Master of Pearls. Jeez, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm barely through the first box almost. Abzan Ascendancy. <clears throat> I think an insect deck would be fun to play as well. A lot of insects. So many multicolor lands to choose from nowadays. I mean, what about the set that's after the, the new block, Shadows Over Shaver, yeah, Shadows Over Instrad? Empty the pits. That looks like it's going to be interesting. You know, our Instrad I heard is a very popular set. I unfortunately wasn't around for that. I came. Uh, Played Magic Online for a little while, but that was during the Rise of the Eldrazi. You know, had I known Butcher of the Horde, I would have bought in boxes of that set if I had known it was going to be that valuable. I think everybody would have. Timur Ascendancy. It's crazy how sets become rare because they were either really disliked or really friggin' awesome. And they just become ultra expensive. Soren, nice. I wouldn't mind getting a foil Soren. Mardu Ascendancy. And we'll be able to, should be able to build an Ascendancy deck after all this. Mm. Or, oh, another Dragon Style Twins. Was that three now, I think? Hardened scales. I wonder if anybody's tried to build like a black green hardened scales with Drana. And um, the Undergrowth Champion. Undergrowth Champion is a very awesome card. Another teamer ascendancy. God, I mean, a lot of these ascendancies. I mean, take a look at this. I got. All those to go through. 
Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Trap Essence. Ah, Sandal. Stainful Stroke and a Sagu Mahler. Fetch me some fetch lands. Another high sentinels. Better end. It's actually a pretty good card. I mean, exile non land permanent. I mean, definitely a good way to get rid of. Plains, pesky planeswalker. Abzan Ascendancy. Sultai Ascendancy. I don't think I've ever had that guy. Pulled that one before. And that's funny how the, the amount of boxes and packs that I've cracked. Granted, I haven't done as much of the cons. Oh, aww. Saw foil land and I got excited. And a howl of the horde. That was a tease right there. A tease. Jeskai Ascendancy again. Ivory Tusk Fortress. Karu Spell Snatcher. Hmm. Ooh, Foil Mythic Wind Mage Rock. I don't know if this is worth anything. Hmm. Foil Mythic. Nice. And a Dune Blast. I do know it's not a foil fetch land. Ah, disappointment. Meandering Tower Shell. Oh, a windswept teeth. Nice. Of course, it's not as much valuable as the other ones, but it is a fetch land that I will take. Blood Soak Champion. He has a one drop. He is not bad at all. Don't use him for blocking. You just. First turn, drop them and start swinging. Another crackling doom. Master of the Pearls.
Another clever impersonator. Nice. <clears throat> Sage of the Inward Eye. You know, technically speaking, cracking packs is not the most economical way of doing the oh, foil mountain. But I love the rush of cracking a pack. Another Rakasha Death Dealer. That feeling, that that sound, that just the, uh, you know, it just brings me back to the ch my childhood of playing Magic as a kid when, you know, I could only get one or two packs at a time. Ankle shankle, yeah, shanker. You know, back then, you know, I had, had to save up my allowance for a couple packs or wait for a holiday or birthday or on a special occasion to get anything, which, you know, flying crane technique, you know, was whatever, it didn't bother me, but that feeling of cracking a pack was always, always awesome. And a wooded foothills, oh yeah, nice. How about a polluted delta foil? That would be awesome, right here. Right here, come on, I can sense it. Foil, nope. Grim Horspex, Horspex. <laughs> Dragon Throne, Jesus. I think my fingers are just automatic now. They're just automatically going to the rare. Blood Soak Champion again. And Hostilities. That's a good board wipe card. Definitely would be nice in Commander. Especially if your opponent runs a lot of artifacts or enchantments especially artifacts man artifacts are such a pain to deal with see the unwritten hmm man be nice oh that and again my camera stops recording anyways this might be good in my big guys deck. I mean, just because it is kind of mana rampy. Hmm. I mean, it's expensive. But I think being able to drop two big, big creatures, I mean, at once would be awesome. Mardu Ascendancy. I mean, can you imagine you drop that with an Ulamog and an Oblivion Sower or some ridiculousness. Swift Kick, Foil, and a Trap Essence. <clears throat> I think that card, if it was one less, a five drop instead of a six, I think that card would be awesome because, oh, Trumpet Blast, Foil, and a Polluted Delta, finally. Nice. If it was a five and you were able to pull it out with, say, a, um, Cards such as, uh, oh, now I forgot, I'll have to think of it. <clears throat> Deflecting Palm. God, now it's going to bother me until I find out what the card is. Let me see, what card am I thinking of? <clears throat> ah, bring the light. There we go. I think if it was a five drop and I could pull it out with a bring the light, ridiculous. 
Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Ash and Cloud Phoenix. Hmm. The morph cost is expensive though. Not almost there. Yeah, we've gone through two boxes already, but not very many fetch lands. Dead drop, foil, and a Sidisi. Brew Tyrant. I was kind of hoping for more fetchies. Would have been, would have been nice. But I mean, there's still plenty of packs. You never know until you know. Dragon style twins again. I guess you can only get so many good drops, you know? Crater's Claw. Rattleclaw Mystic. Also a very good card. <clears throat> it's kind of worth it just to play the morph cost. Nomad Outpost. Oh, outpost. Foil. And a Mantis Rider. Nice. Wow, oh, yeah. I'd pay the, the morph cost just if I didn't have green. And another other end. Hmm. This would be very good in a Eldrazi deck. I'm gonna have to put this off to the side. Right of the Serpent foil. And a Rakashi, Rakasha, Raka, Rakash, Asa, Rakash Asa, Visor. Hmm. Be given maybe a Delver deck or something that puts things, that exile things and brings them back into play. Another End Hostilities. Some sort of EDH deck. All right, let's kind of plow through more of these. Ooh, another polluted delta. <laughs> See, you get excited, get a move a little faster, and boop, <clears throat> get a payout. Now, if I can just get a foil one, that's what I'm looking for. Jeez. Pack is defeating me right now. Maybe it's got something good in it. Who knows? Let's see. Retribution of the Ancients. Meh. All right. So much for that theory. Sultai Ascendancy. Mardu Ascendancy. And a 
Serac Dragon Claw. Maybe actually a really good card to use bring the light on. Oh, a foil then? Oh, a foil carrier lich lord. Oh, maybe that's got some value and then a savage knuckle blade. Harspucks, Haruspecs. <laughs> Some of these words, man, they elude me. Ooh, Sarkon. Nice. Legendary 4-4 Dragon Creature with Flying, Indestructible, and Haste. That's pretty beefy. Doesn't lose loyalty while he's not a Planeswalker. I mean, they'd have to remove him. And then, when they get the, the emblem, though. <clears throat> at the beginning of draw, two years just gone, then at the beginning of each end step, discard your hand. Man, that would be, you'd have to have some major mana to want to run that emblem or Desperate. Discard your hand every time. Or maybe you draw something that lets you, I don't know, reach up for your deck like a, what is it? <clears throat> Flooded Strand, hey. All right. Master of Pearls. Yeah, like 12 or 15 packs left. Ooh. Oh, Valley Dasher. Foil. And a Ghostfire Blade. I always get excited when I see a foil. Always hope that it's something ridiculous. Mind Swipe. Like, you don't understand how excited I am to go get... These boxes of Modern Masters, oh, I am excited. Oh, Chief of the Scale Foil. Mm. And the Trail of Mystery. You know, if he was an ally and he did ally, like they did an ally version of this, so broken. Two drop and get a <coughs> warrior, other warrior creatures get zero, plus zero, plus one. And an ally deck, crucial. Thousand wins. Empty the pits. Siege Rhino, nice. It's always a fun card and everybody hates it when it comes into play. <clears throat> mm. And Ivory Tusk Fortress again. Final, no, never mind. Another tease. Another tease. I was about to get excited too. Man. Oh, that's such a tease right there. Look at the stack of rares and foils. It's getting a little ridiculous. Man, that was such a tease. That, that was such a mean tease. Dig through time. 
a good card actually, a Delve. Icy Blast. God, my camera really needs to stop. I think it stopped recording after every 30 minutes. Team Ascendancy. Oh, never mind, it's just dying. <laughs> Hopefully, we can finish this. Oh no. This guy ascendancy. Only a couple packs left. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Uh, Sagu Mahler. Oh shit, there's still six packs left. Oh, another polluted delta. But not foil yet. It's coming, I can feel it. Rotting Macedon and a Bloodstained Mire. Nice. Back to back fetches. Villainous Wealth. Oh, three packs. Hurry. Hurry. It's almost dead. Uh, oh, Anafenza. She's a nice card. Visor again. And last one. Hurry, hurry, we can do it. We can do it. And a wooded foothills, but no foil. Alright, I'm gonna recharge the battery and I'll come back. Alright, guys, so we have tallied up all the value cards from our triple unboxing. So I have one Bloodstained Mire. Three. Wooded Foothills, three Polluted Deltas, two Flooded Strands, one Windswept Heath, one Anafenza, one Soren, and a Foil Wingmate Rock. Now, of course, having a getting a Foil Fetch would have been nice, but you know, for a triple unboxing, 10 fetch lands, I, I'm pretty happy. I mean, these run, what, 20 to $30 a pop usually, so having 10 of them to use in my deck, so it's going to be awesome. Um, we will be having a Modern Masters unboxing here soon, and then I also will be doing more, some dra some Origins, uh, some more Cons, and some more Battle for Zendikar. So please stay tuned and we'll hopefully see you again soon.